um, I can't be more gracious enough to share my knowledge and the implications of our my people's games and your people's games and I just love having the knowledge I was passed down and sharing it to other Inuit and I love it so I can't be more gracious enough I can't say that just enough honestly thank you so much uh, I'm originally from Inuvik Northwest Territories as everyone else <laughs> um, I did not know that that's crazy uh, I I now live in Sulog, Ontario, and I am here with my girlfriend, Caroline Onclair. Hi, everyone. I'm the camera mm -hmm. camera lady today. Mm -hmm. <laughs> She'll be conducting the camera while I also have my good friend here, Colby. He'll right. be he'll be helping me with the games and competing and losing <laughs> <laughs> and losing. <laughs> you never lose. You just learn. So I thank everyone for coming to join and watch and participate in the games. Um, I know it's tough doing it over camera and doing it by yourself, but this is a perfect way to social distance and get, keep everyone safe. Thanks, guys. Hope you guys enjoy. Okay, right, now I'll flip the camera. Let's, Let's see if I remember. <laughs> Bear with me. Okay. Got it? Yeah, I got it. So, traditionally what these games were meant for were to build up skills and knowledge and to develop your inner spirit to keep your to keep you alive out on the barren lands on the ice shields of the arctic ocean or up in the north of north of 60 where i'm from and most of you um, these games were brought up from our ancestors that wanted to per per persevere on the ice these games were to were meant for keep you warm muscular active and always doing something that way you don't frizzle up and go frail. Even the elders do these games at the age of 70s, the 80s, to even 90s. These, they, they, these games still are strong with them and, spirit, and spiritual, as, as for me. Growing up doing these games, it meant a lot that it's not about winning or losing. It's about how you learn and you overcome the possibilities that your body can do stuff. You, like if you were doing a high kick, it's not about how high you go. It's not about who's going to beat you or who's doing better than you. It's about you learning these games and you learn the knowledge. The height is just something that comes with it. That's all. These games are more than just records and competition. These games are about lifestyle, living, and just overall fitness. So the first thing we will do are the pain games. Those are the those are what we're going to do first. So Kobe will grab a stick. First thing you first thing we're going to do is we're going to do the face poke. Um, I'm sure you guys heard other names for this. Usually what we have is we have two pointed off ends. I couldn't point them off because it's very hard to shave these down. So we're just going to do it with the flat side. And what we're going to do, you need to. What we're, going, what we're going to do is we're going to place on two spots of the face. So the, the thing you need, though, is a very flexible stick. Because if it's not flexible, you're just going to puncture your face. <laughs> you don't want that. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a first spot is going to be below the teeth on the, gu on the, on the gums. It's going to be below here, below the lip. And our job is to push each other. So until someone quits, until the pain gets unbearable. <laughs> you do that until that happens or the stick breaks. So we'll start up here. Colby's not sure what he signed up for. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so as you can tell that the stick will bend and it will hurt your gums. He's got a beard, so that's that's cheating. <laughs> So that's one of the ones that imitates these games will imitate freezing your face or freezing your mouth from the from the cold wind. These games will imitate you having a frozen lip where you can't talk or you get you get muscle uh, pauses from the from the cold. So we're going to go the second spot is going to go below the nose above the lip right here.
Oh. <laughs> so, like, these games get very unbearable at times, and that's when that happens. Is it, it imitates having a frozen face and a frozen lip. So like, you will have to deal with that the entire time. Also, we have another one. It's called another paint game. It's basically just like a, it's, it's the muskox push, but with the Alaskan way. So we're going to go forehead to forehead and that will imitate having a minor, mi like a minor brain freeze. Just like when you drink a slushy too fast, <laughs> you get a real bad headache. So we're going to go on hands and knees. Okay. We're going to go forehead to forehead. And we're going to say push and we're going to push each other. So go. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's one of the games as well. That, that just imitates, like I said before, just freezing your face in the cold winter. Um, these games will help you strengthen your face as well, not only for the ear pull or the stick pull or the weight pull. Um, all these games I would love to show you, but we lack the... the the properties and the equipment for this. Any questions? Question, yeah. Um, does it help to like purse your lip at all when you're doing this one? Like if you... <laughs> uh, for, for, the, for the top, for the top lip? Yeah. Um, like I said... Um, does it I make would, it easier? I would love to hear you Tell me stuff because I want to learn as well. Um, I've tried everything. I've tried crunching my lip. I've tried numbing with ice furs. Nothing really seems to work. It still hurts the amount, the, the same amount. Um, yeah. If you have any suggestions, please let me know. Is having a beard like an advantage? Uh, um, that I can't really know myself because I, I can never grow one. He has I mean, four hair. I got, I got the Inuit blood, so I can never really grow a good beard. Um, I've been growing this for months in preparation for this day. <laughs> uh, any other questions? Has anybody else tried this, you know, with a friend or partner? Anybody want to demonstrate? <laughs> Um, a good way to practice as well is putting the stick up against the wall and pushing it yourself. Nice. Um, the longest I've seen two guys go for this is, it, I think it was about like five minutes, I think. And two kids tried and they snapped the stick. So I guess they were just pushing too hard. Um, <laughs> but these games are just something, it's not about winning or losing. It's just about overcoming your own self to do better and to do your best as well. So another pain game, what we all love and like, as I think it's a pain game, but also an endurance game, it's called the knuckle off. Everyone can try this right now, if you like. So what we're going to do, Bobby and I, we will be on the floor, side by side. <laughs> yeah, we're going to use the rug because it's super soft. And what we're going to do is we're going to go in a push-up position. Toes and hands are off your chest and your lower groin cannot be touching the floor. So it's just your hands and your toes. If your butt were to break playing comes too high, you get called out for it. Or if your stomach touches or your chest touches, you'll get called out for it. You, you're, the only three points are your feet and your hands to be touching the ground and you have to be flat. Just like this, just like a plank. So that's what you have to do. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go for distance, we're gonna go close to the camera, and that's it. Okay, you ready to go? Gotcha. Okay, one, two, three, up, go. <laughs> <laughs> so that's one of the games. Um, my good friend, Chris Stepdong, he is from Hay River. Um, I believe he holds the record for the knuckle hop and it is 225 feet. I believe that was his record. Um, he, I, I would always learn from him, his knowledge on how he would do it and the technique he has. Uh, that is one of the games as well. 
So another pain game that we would like to do is called the lip pull. Okay? I've heard about this one. <laughs> Chris, what's this yeah. background behind the um, knuckle hop? Oh, yeah, sorry. Sorry about that. Um, the story behind the knuckle hop, the history behind it. My grandmother, my grandmother taught me that when you were in the knuckle hop, you were on the plains of the ice and you wanted to seal at a great distance, you would go into the knuckle hop position, you had your harpoon on your back, and you would knuckle hop as close as you can, and then up, grab your harpoon, and then throw the, throw the harpoon like a snow snake, and it would go along the ice and puncture the seal. So that, that game right there imitates, when you're in the push-up position, it will imitate a seal coming closer and closer wanting to get back to the watering hole. So you are inching closer and closer to attack the seal and get your kill. Any, any questions? Um, yeah, I'm wondering if you can see the chat at all. Um, Brian had a funny <laughs> comment about the what is it? The pain games. He said, I don't have, I have a flexible stick, but I also don't want to end my relationship. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> using a wall would be perfect. <laughs> Aren't participating. Um, I have a question about the knuckle hop. Are there any good modifications for people that can't quite do it yet? Um, a good one is just like a push up. Um, you could do the seal. So, Oh, a good one is to go flat handed and keep your stomach to the floor. This will help you get the muscles in your arms and in your back to actually start doing it. So all, you would keep your legs down and your groin down as well, but hands flat, hands by your side and push it through toes. So it's just, it's just like a seal. The good thing is to keep your hands flat and just to slowly gain the muscle in your arms to actually start doing the knuckle hop. And when you get when you get the confidence, you could wear gloves to do the knuckle hop. And then when you get more confident, take the gloves off and do it on a rug. And when you're ready to actually do the actual game itself, is to go in a concrete or a plain plain piece of wood and do the knuckle hop. Such a hard, hard game. It's so crazy seeing people like go all the way around the gym, but like they like they wouldn't quit until their skin was down to the bone. Wow. It's gruesome to see, but it's also really cool that they don't give up. Yeah, yeah. Endurance. I also just want to say hi to Taylor and Pierce because you <laughs> you joined a little late. <laughs> but I'm glad you're here. Is there any other questions? <laughs> uh, oh hi, sorry. Uh I'm here with my Roommate Allison and my Hi. and my partner Hetty. Hello. Yeah. Hi, Allison. Chris, you want to say hi? Oh, hi! Thanks for joining. <laughs> <laughs> We're good to go. No, no other questions. Yep. Good. Okay. So we're gonna do the we're gonna do the lip pull. Um. What we're going to do is we're going to join, we're going to go side by side, okay? I'm going to put my hand by my side, he's going to put his hand by his side, you're going to reach over my shoulder, and we're going to grab each other's lip. Okay. <laughs> you okay with that? Yeah, I got it. Okay, so. And then, I'm, then we're pulling? Yeah. Okay. So, so it's lip pull. Yeah, it's lip <laughs> hence the Hence the game lip pull. So what, what we're going to do is we're going to kind of lock our, li our fingers into our lips each other's lips and we're going to pull back. So, right. oh, okay. <laughs> okay, you ready? One, two, three, pull. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's another game right there that imitates freezing your mouth and having really cold gums. Oh. Brian says, I don't think I have any friends as good as Colby? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, just, I'm, I'm, I'm just learning this stuff too. It's pretty, it's pretty cool. That would imitate when you were making your slippers or a moose hide jacket, you would have the moose hide in your mouth, scraping the hide off. 
And having that in your mouth all, all the time and keeping it clamped is really te tenuous on the jaw. So having that facial structure, that facial, facial muscle is very adamant to, to be, to have in these games as well. Any questions about that? As uh, Nanook says, make sure to wash your hands, dot, 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 COVID. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. Um, Very close to that one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, wear gloves. So the next, next thing we're going to do, we're going to move on to the endurance games. These endurance games, oh, no, sorry, sorry, sorry. The strength games. The endurance games are left. So the strength games, the first one we're going to do is we're going to do the muskox push. Muskox push is going to go... Basically, you, you look like a bunch of muskox fighting for your mate. And this is what, this is what we're, we're going on hands or knees. We're going to interlock our heads to our shoulders. And we're going to do our best to push each other out of the circle or as far as we can as possible. Okay? I'm going to go hands and knees. Okay? I'm going to go put my head here. You put your head there. Okay? So we're going to start. Someone says tighten up. We tighten up and we start pushing. Okay, so one, two, they tighten up, and then push. Who's gonna? <laughs> Oops. All right. I guess Colby won. So, I guess uh, Colby, I'm your mate now. <laughs> so that game right there <laughs> imitates having a piece of caribou or a piece of moose on your back while you're climbing a hill. That imitates going from hill or mountain to mountain, or just if you were had a very strong wind out on the ice shield, you would get down that low and it'll help you slowly trek your way back to your home or back then just to keep your physical shape as well and strength. Any questions on that one? Okay. Oh, no questions. No questions, good? Yep. Okay, cool. So the second strength game we're going to do is it's called the arm pull. Arm pull is a very fun one. It's very entertaining. People love watching this one. What we're going to do is we're going to go back. We're going to go sit down. We're going to intertwine our legs together. And we're going to lock arms by the hip, by the bicep, and the forearm. That's where we will be locking. And we will pull against each other. So we're going to sit down. One leg over, one leg under. Yeah. So. Since it's this leg, that's this arm. Okay? So we go up, we slap here, yep, and we lock. You grab my ankle, I grab yours. Okay. All we do is we just basically just pull each other. Gotcha. Okay? So someone says one, two, three, tighten up, you tighten up, and then pull. <laughs> you got okay. that one, my mom. Okay. Another leg now. <laughs> Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Up. Okay. Tighten up. One, two, three, pull. Come on, Colby, you got oh. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so, like you just seen there, these games are not about winning or losing, it's about respect for each and other. Um, I, uh, when I beat him, we shook hands. It's because I want him to practice and practice. I want him to have that determination when he goes back home to his home community to practice and train. Um, I would hopefully, if I was competing in the Arctic Winter Games, I would hope to have kids or young adults to come up to me, ask me for tips, or I would ask elders for tips just for knowledge and the determination to do better as well, to prove that um, I don't want to give up. I want to make sure I give these guys my best. That game imitates pulling a seal out of the water when you're sitting by the hole. 
and the seal goes under, you want to be able to pull him out of the hole without using your arms because your hands will freeze. Any, any questions? That was really cool. But also, I want to say hi to Shifa who just joined. I haven't seen her in a while. You're on mute. I don't know if you want to introduce yourself, Shifa. Um, so, to un there we go. Can you hear me? Yeah. Oh, hi. Hi, Shifa. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. I'm glad you could join. I'm glad I can finally do the Zoom thingy. Yay. Thank yeah. you. Shifa's part of our Toronto Mute community. Right on, right on. Okay. I see, yeah. Thanks for coming. Okay. Another one that we're going to do is another strength game. Again, like the back issue of this one, it's called the it's called the stick pull. It's basically just pulling a whale or a seal with your friends. When you have the seal in the water or the whale, you want to be able to pull it without using all the arm, all the muscles in your arm. You want to use your whole body. Basically, in these games, your body is just one big muscle that you can control with your mind and spirit. So once you're in control of your mind and spirit, you will be able to do any game possible. And that's what I love about these. So this game right here is called the stick pull. Yeah. So Kobe and I are going to go sit down again. We're going to go same position. We're going to plant our feet from feet face to feet face. And we've got the stick and we're gonna pull each other. Okay. So we're gonna sit down. Yeah. I have to go that way a little bit. No, you have to <laughs> no, you just, like bend your knees like mine. Okay. So you grab the stick like that. I'll grab the stick like this. Okay. So what we're gonna do is just gonna tighten up and then pull. Okay. That's all we're doing. That's all we're doing. Okay, one, tighten up, pull. <laughs> okay, so you go on the inside, I go on the outside. Okay. Okay. Tighten up. Okay. One, two, three, pull. <laughs> so that game right there, like I said, it imitates pulling a whale or a seal out of the water. Having these skills and having the technique to do this won't put a much strain on your arms or your shoulders. Use your whole body as one big muscle. Is there any questions for that one? No, we're good? Yeah, you're good. So a good way to practice for this one, what I like to practice with is if I don't have a partner like Colby, which is a very good partner because he, he tries his best and I like that because it challenges me. And it puts me, makes me work. So I like that. But a good way to practice is by pulling a boat out of the water or pulling a four wheeler out of the mud. Doing these games, there's always some type of way you can do these games at home at any given time. So, what we're going to do now, another strength game is called the head pull. This, oh, <laughs> this game is one of my favorites. Let's put uh, I think it's behind you. What are you looking for? The rope. rope. Oh. Then the. Probably. I think it's in the room. <laughs> <laughs> I can go get it because. So the head pull is a very famous game that people like. You got it. You got it? Cool. Got it. Cool. So this game, people love this game. Um, it shows the pure, sheer will that a human can have, women and men and kids. This game's about in yourself, not quitting, not quitting on yourself, not giving up on the other person. It's about who can, who can just stand there and be themselves as strong as possible. These games help you with that. These games push you beyond what you can do. That's what I love about these. So, the head pull. All we're gonna do is gonna go down, just like a push-up position. We put the rope around our head. Okay. Okay. And we're gonna go up. And we're gonna tighten up. And then pull. Okay. 
<laughs> Ouch. So these games are very tedious, but at the same time, they teach you such great life lessons. It teaches you that you cannot give up on yourself. It teaches you that when you hit a brick wall, that you can't just stop and look at it. You have to overcome it and learn from it. Any questions about this game? Um, Brian had a comment. He said, the last time we did this at a family gathering, we broke three of my uncle's belts. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to resort. <laughs> How long is your rope? How long? Yeah. Yes. Uh, two feet. In length, I have no clue because I tied it. Um, but for the head space, two feet. Just enough to ha have two heads inside. And what kind of rope do you recommend without scratching your head, hair or a skull? Um, I would recommend the very thick with the inner lining. If you can tell here, there's an inner lining inside. Okay. You can okay. See soft rope on the outside, so it doesn't hurt the head that much. It doesn't scratch. Oh, okay. it. it doesn't cause damage to your head or hair. <laughs> Thank you. Of course, of course. Um, a, a cool thing that I've seen people practice with. I have a friend up in Greenland. And he's a pilot, and he has access to small, small planes and small aircrafts that he would pull with his head. The practice for these games. So you would see a human being pull with his head, he would pull a tiny aircraft, or he would have his truck and he would pull his truck. It's just stuff like that you can prepare yourself, <laughs> mentally prepare yourself as well. Wow. So the, another strength game that we can do is called just like the stick pull, we're going to do the rope pull. So what we're going to do is we're going to put it on our feet. Okay? Right here. And we're just going to do like that. Hold that. Okay. Oh, like up with your feet or back with your feet? No, just back. Okay. Just like that, yeah. yeah. So what we're going to do is one, two, three, 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 Oh no! <laughs> Colby is the winner! <laughs> so that game imitates freezing your toes and freezing your feet where you can't use them. That imitates where you can take your feet as far as possible where you can't actually use them anymore. Where it burns to the skin. That just keeps you keeps your feet moving and the blood flowing in your feet is always hot and cold. Atmospheres. Any questions? Are you allowed to wear socks or shoes with that, or is it just bare feet? You can wear, you can wear anything you like. Um, the way I would up is just to do all bare skin. Um, that way you can get your body used to it, get the heat off, and get your body and mind. And you know, when you're preparing for this game, you know what you're in for. So I, I love it. Um, I think Taylor has a question. I see a hand up. Okay. Um, does the rope have to be like around like the base of your toes or like does has it to be, has to be around the knuckles of the toes? <laughs> right, okay. Right at the toes. That way you can't have it at the base of your ankle. Yeah. It can really hurt yourself. <laughs> if someone doesn't quit and they don't know you, it, mm -hmm. it, it can really hurt you. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. Thank you. There's another question in the comments. Uh, Tatiana is asking, what kind of stuff is used for making a rope traditionally? Uh, we would use moose sinew. So you would have the inner linings of the intestines and the skin, and you would dry that out, and it becomes really tough rope-like and leather-like material where it doesn't tear. That's why when, if you have like an an elder and people say, oh, he's made out of sinew. That means he's been in the games for a long time. 
he's a very strong person or she is at, like they're made out of sinew. That's when you know they're, they've been around and they know the games. So we like to use sinew part of the moose or caribou. Mo moose preferably because it's much thicker and stronger. That's what we use. Cool. Very cool. Anything else? Any other questions? No. Oh, you're good. All right. So what we're going to go on to now is our everyone's favorite, the endurance games. We're going to do the Alaskan one foot high kick, and we're going to do the two foot high kick, and then the one foot high kick. And the last game we'll do after the endurance is a, is a good surprise that everyone likes and watches. It's fun, but not for us. It's fun to watch. <laughs> so we're going to do the endurance games. I'll just, uh, can you get that soccer type all week? It's wrapped up in green lines. <laughs> it's right there, right on the TV stand. Right, right, oh, I, mean, I can go get it. If I mean, light stand. Oh. Sorry. There you go. Yeah, the sock. There you go. <laughs> I'm expecting a white sock. <laughs> exactly, yeah. So this is a target that it was essentially used. What the target we usually originally use is a seal target made of actual seal skin, and on the inside would be seal as well. It's just to keep it traditional, and we show respect to the animals that gave it to us. A, sh a target that we reach and want to reach and prepare our whole lives to reach. So we're this go one ahead. is a sock, not quite the seal. <laughs> ah. <laughs> okay, I thought it was a sock. There you go. Okay. Okay. Do you want me to hold it? If you can hold it from that, that'd be perfect. Okay. So what we're going to what we're going to start on first is we will do the Alaskan high kick. So if you want to lower it a bit. Actually, Kobe might be. <laughs> So if you want to lower it to about there, that's perfect. Okay. And what I'm going to what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up, hold my foot, and I will come up and kick it with my left foot. That's my kicking foot. Can you see? Yep. Everyone can see well. You're good. Good. Awesome. Maybe you raise it a bit more. Yeah, that's perfect. There. So that's what you want to do. That's the Alaskan high kick. You have a lot of time to prepare yourself and to focus on the target. At the same time, you have to be as quiet as possible during these games. That, that, that because when you're jumping from iceberg to iceberg or ice shield to ice shield, the water underneath, you can hear the vibrations. If you can hear the vibrations, seals and fish can hear the vibrations as well. So you have to be as quiet as possible when you land. It just shows that when you do it, you have body control, you have mind control. And it's really nice. Cole, do you want to give it a try? I'll let you do these ones. <laughs> you don't want to try? Yeah, I'll okay, okay. okay, cool. <laughs> that would be me too. <laughs> okay. oh, no, you bring up the... So I'm pushing off of so, this foot. Like you, I get this before. So you want to come down. Ready? Hold your foot like this. Yeah. What foot are you kicking with? I'll kick with my right. Okay, so you hold your foot with this end. Okay. No, no, <laughs> on the inside. See how I'm holding my Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. you hold your back end. Yeah. And what you want to do is lift your foot. Yeah. When you hold it and then lift off of this and then kick it. All right. Yeah. Good. Nice. <laughs> nice. There you go. It's nice. That's what we want. That's what we want. So now that was the Alaskan high kick. And if you guys seen carefully that I showed him that he didn't want to try it the first time. I encouraged him. I want him to try. What we do with the young ones, and what I was brought up doing, is that the elders always took the word can't out of, the, out of our vocabulary. If the kid said, oh, I can't do that, that's 50 push-ups. 
They want to install that you can always do something to put your mind to it and you push yourself. They never want to hear you say, I can't do that one or I don't want to do that one. Then you have to be disciplined in such a way that you can always overcome your fear of doing something. So if you can do 50 push-ups, you can easily just kick a small target. It's about your mind that you can overcome. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna do the two foot high kick. And like I say, you're gonna to try to do this and kick and land as quiet as possible. So I'm gonna come up, kick the target with two feet simultaneously and land with the two feet as quiet as possible. I have to be, I have to maintain balance. Don't hit your head on the ceiling. <laughs> <laughs> I will. <laughs> I try not to hit my head. I almost did. <laughs> so that's what that's what you want to do is you want to come up with two feet, try to hit the target. Um, it's it's sad to say we have a very low ceiling, so I can't really put myself to my full potential. But that's perfect. You can always do any game in any atmosphere as small as possible as long as you try your best. That's what we do. That's what we practice for. You want to give it a try? Yeah. Let's do it. All right. <laughs> I feel like I'm much less worried about hitting the ceiling with my head. I don't think I can hit it with my hand. Okay, do you have to take off with two feet as well? Take off with two feet, okay. kick with two feet. Okay. That's much more intimidating than the target to do it. <laughs> no, <laughs> that was just one. You can do it. You can do it. Okay. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> All right. You can do it. Again. Okay. One more chance. You have okay. one more chance. Just uh, focus on bringing your knees to your chest. Knees to your chest. Yeah. Both your knees. First? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, you had it right there. So now once you once you do that, kick out. Okay. You got it perfectly. One more time? One more time. Give me one more you can, you can do it. You can do it. Knees to your chest and just kick out. Oh, oh you had it. There you go. That's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So there, what I made him do is I made him do it three times. In competition, you have three chances to do each each sport. It's not about you missing. It's about you doing your best to go again and again to give you give more of yourself, just a bit more. And what we do is that we give them three chances, and on the third chance, when they think they ran out of the, out of the tank, we give them a good motivational clap. In unison, everyone in the gym for the good unison clap. One, it gives you, it gives, you, it shows you support for the competitor, and for the competitor, it shows that you have the gym with you. You're one with everybody. No one's against you. Everyone's there to help you. That's the best thing about these games. Any questions? Uh, okay, there is uh, from Tatiana. It says. Uh, do you use standard knots for these kinds of ropes or are the, are, are any traditional knots for such ropes? Oh, I think that was for the old, the head pull. Oh, the head pull. I think it was the other rope. Oh yeah. So that the rope doesn't untie. She's asking if there's like a traditional type of Inuit knot. Um, it's just standard knots. Um, I haven't really been taught any traditional knots usually. Um, we just use any standard knot. Okay, and there's a question for from Shipa, and she says, um, "Do you have to keep your feet together at all times, yeah. string?" And okay, yeah, definitely. Keeping your feet together is very hard, but when you have a lot of practice and a lot of great technique that you put into this, you have like you you will tend to see your feet in the air. So in like in your own self, you slow down, like you, you slow down time. You can see your feet separate and that's okay. That happens all the time. Some of the greatest competitors in the world for these games always separate their feet or they come off. It's totally fine. It's about, it's, it's just about you. That's all. Any other questions? Like, do you get disqual like, do you get disqualified if your feet come apart? Do they have to stay uh, together to? So in the games of competition, they have to stay together. 
just to show that you have actual control of your own feet and your muscles. So when you kick it, you have to keep both feet together. This is okay. This is okay, but this is not okay. You cannot do this. You can, they have to be same, same side by side together or apart. They cannot be off center. Okay. But your heels at least have to be touched. Yeah. They, they're just, just as long as your feet are totally the same thing. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> now what we're going to do is we're going to do the one foot high kick. This is everyone's favorite. Um, this is one I excelled in the most. Uh, I got a record of nine feet, six inches. That is the Canadian record. Um, I, I beat that after 30 years. The guy that had it before me still lives in Anubik today. And every time these games come upon each uh, on us in Anubik, him and I are always side by side talking to each other, exchanging techniques or what to do, or if the wind is pushing the steel tug, you know how to control your body. Stuff like that, you always have awesome competitors and awesome people by your sides. When you're competing, you aren't competing against other people. That They're there to help you and you're there to help them. You're, you're there to help them excel and they're same thing for you. We are not battling against each other. We are not crushing each other. We are helping each other to motivate each other to kick at a higher distance or jump a further distance. So this one is the one for high kick, everyone's favorite. I'll start off right here. So land as quiet as possible and kick the target with one foot. Any questions? So you kick with the same foot you land, right? Yes. So you want to kick and land with the same foot. So your foot, your other foot comes up automatically. So if it was if it was above here and I'm below it, this will help you target your muscles and your control over your body. I cannot see the target because it is above me and it is moving. So I have to find it with myself. Oh I just <laughs> So that is <clears throat> tough when you do that, when you're practicing. Um, I hate to say, but the COVID weight gets to you and it's, it's mm -hmm. tough to do. <laughs> the COVID weight. <laughs> <laughs> and doing these games just keeps you mentally fit and physically fit and it keeps your spirit in high hopes. Any questions? I just want to say, don't hurt yourself and, you know, like, don't push yourself too hard. Like, <laughs> that light looks really close to his head, eh? <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't want you to, like, overstretch or anything. So, I know, like, if you're competing, you'll probably do a warm up and okay. be all loose and limber. Yeah, so you, you did the two foot really well. I don't think I did. I think my feet, my feet, my feet kind of split pretty much there. So you, you're going to go kick like that and land with the same foot. Yeah. So you have to land off, you have to jump off two feet. Jump off two feet. Oh, yeah. Okay. I didn't know that. But... So. <laughs> oh, you close, man. Okay, I'm going to Boom. There you go. Nice. Nice. So that's a good game. These games are not meant for trying to outbest somebody. These games are to push somebody. What's up? Hmm? Okay. Oh, sorry. I thought you were in. No, okay. But these games are just meant to push other people to do their best and for you to do your best as well. These games will help you mentally. That's so rewarding when you work, when you work, like when you work for it to either try your best to do the knuckle hop and see how far you go or see how high you can kick or see how strong you get. It's super rewarding and, and for your soul and your mental, your mental health, it's perfect for that. Any questions? Um, I guess just as someone who has coached kids before, I always want to know like different modifications and how to do things safely, like without hurting yourself, really. 
So do you have any like suggestions, like how to, how to get strength for that exercise? Strength for the one foot? Yeah. Or any of them really. Um, it's just, it's mod like it's modded for kids in such a way that, um, you need a kid there with you just to see where they're at. Um, but for starting for kids that are starting off, if you were to do the one foot, you would have the target just an inch off the floor. And all you want them to do is just kick it, kick it, get, get the, get them used to you just using that one foot, right? Get them used to that and then move it up and get them to jump and then kick with one foot and land with both feet, jump up, kick, land with both feet. And then once they get, once they start getting comfortable and trusting themselves that they can do it, move it up a bit and get them to still kick it and land with both feet. And when they get more comfortable, get them to land on the one foot. That's a good way to start. Um, for kids that are just starting out, just do the, the kick, just like a soccer ball, like an inch off the ground, and that's perfect for them. Any other questions? That's it? That's it. Okay, so another, the last one we're gonna do, it's, it's our famous one. Um, people love watching it. People always ask for it back home in Inuvik. We might, we might need uh, Caroline to help us <laughs> so she can probably adjust the camera to such a way that you can see us all do it. Uh, maybe put the camera on the, on the thing here, dude. Sorry guys, just gotta adjust it really quick. Oh, sorry. My, my games. <laughs> Okay, which one are you doing? The toe hang. Okay, I think this is good. That's perfect, that's perfect. Okay. Okay, so what we're gonna do here, guys, is it's called the toe hang. Um, just, like it's, just like it sounds, we are going to wrap our toes around the stick behind me, and we're gonna get Caroline and Colby to pick me up just by my toes. This imitates back in the day freezing your feet and having calluses and having frozen toes or having just, yeah, frozen feet, essentially. So let's give it a try here. We'll see if we can do it. And we're gonna get everyone to try. All right. So, get off face this way. That way we can <laughs> maybe come over here so we can see you lift off the ground. Okay. Sorry, I don't mean to lift off the ground. No, that's okay. okay. Okay, um, just like how she's holding. Yeah, yeah. Um, come a bit closer, guys, because I don't want to bend stick that much. Okay. Okay. Lift it up a bit more. Okay, you guys ready? Yes. Oh, sorry. <laughs> okay, stay there, stay there, stay there. Yeah, you got it. Okay. One, two, three, up, up. Oh. 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 Ow. You want to give it a try? Yeah, I'll give it a try. Okay. Okay. Okay, just like you see me do it for. Crunch up as best you can. So are you holding like your wrist like that? Yeah, I'm holding my wrist like that behind my legs. You want to intergauge your core and your back and just okay. Focus on your toes, man. Got it. Okay? Yeah. One. Are they tight? Yeah. Okay, one, two, three, up. <laughs> it hurts. Oh, it hurts. Can I give it a try, baby? Okay, I'll give it a try. Oh. Okay, here we go. You have to overlook the pain. <laughs> I know, I try every time. <laughs> it never works. <laughs> okay. So let us know when you're ready. Remember, you kind of want to slide your skin up, just like that. Yeah. Okay. Okay, you ready? Oh! <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> Oh. 
Oh, okay. Oh my gosh, I thought I. Okay. <laughs> okay, so that game right there, um, that is where your mental and your physical self meet each other. You okay? Yep. Yeah, I was just trying to. Yeah, I got it. So, like I said, that's where your physical and your mental meet. That's where they clash. That's where you need the strength, but you also need to overcome that pain and use your mental self to get yourself off the ground. It's it's taken me years to do that. It, it, I didn't just wake up one day, I, hey, I'm gonna do a toe hang. I'm gonna go hang from my closet. So, it takes years to do that. Um, the overlooking that pain is something that really stands within uh, like myself doing these games. Because all these games require your pain to be endured. So having myself mentally ready and mentally fit for that is, I don't feel the pain. So any questions about that one? I think just the comments. I feel like I used to try that, you know, like on the monkey bars when you're a kid, but you definitely gained a bit of weight since being 10 years old. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it doesn't look as fun anymore. <laughs> Is that, uh, is that it? Any, anything else? Has anybody else tried it before? Um, I've, I've had tons of people try it. Um, they always try their best. Um, if they don't really succeed, but I know for a fact that they keep trying and trying, they will do it. Yeah, it definitely want to get off the floor the first time. Yeah. Cool. I think that's it. Yeah. Uh, well, I think there's a question. Okay. Oh, hi. Um, yeah, I was, I was wondering uh, what people use like traditionally for like, yeah, like the stick. Um, I, we usually just use a very thick wooden stick, but I've seen people use an actual moose like foam. Floor. And now that, that's a lot worse because it's more triangular shape, so it kind of cuts your foot more. But that, I've, I've seen people use a moose bone before. Um, that was really cool. Keep it really traditional and really in the spirit of the games. But it's just also, you could, by your discretion, you can use anything you want. There's another question uh, from Tatiana, and she says uh, for this game, so the toe hang um do, do your feet must oh my gosh sorry are your feet always naked or you can have socks or boots um <clears throat> you would always want your feet to be naked it's really tough with the socks because you could easily slip and hurt yourself and with boots you can slip as well and it's just you're not really doing the toe hang it's basically you're just putting the shoelaces on the piece of wood and you're hanging from that. Doing the toe hang, you won't get the essential pain that you would learn from actually freezing your feet. Um, right now, it feels like my feet are frozen, so I can't really, I'm keeping them curled up. Uh, so just um, using bare feet is a lot better than using anything really in such an ironic way. <laughs> Any other questions? Um. I guess I'm I'm just super excited to have another Inuvialik on. <laughs> so, and we also have quite a few Inuvialik listeners, watch uh, viewers. I'm wondering if like there are any any of the games that are more specific to the Western Arctic, any that like we're better at. What are your thoughts? <laughs> <laughs> the Western Arctic, the games were mentally outside in the winter that we. I've seen Western Inuit could excel a lot more in. Um, the snow snake, where you have to throw a spear along the ice. Uh, you could do the pole push, where an entire team of Inuit would push another team. And that's a lot of fun. You have like a six by six pole, and you would push each other. And also, another one would be. Um, the airplane is a good one that people love and it's just i think the western inuit are more accustomed to 
they're more uh it's just by everyone's discretion also like i said it's if you practice and you do well you can they be good at any game yeah i'm mostly asking because uh brian my coworker slash boss is from labrador so we always like to play a game like <laughs> try and compete against each other oh, yeah. gosh, i know a lot, of, a lot of the games too are like very popular in alaska so we're obviously a little bit closer to alaska um and brian is asking is a four person carry from the western arctic um i think that's more eastern i believe or um i've only i've only seen it done in wheel the uh, I believe I saw that the four person carries only Eastern Arctic, I believe. Okay. Have you ever done it before? I have. Um, I haven't gotten very far. The four person carries always is basically like I said, four, you have four people on you, one stuck on your chest, on your back, and you're bowling two people on the side, and you just walk around the <laughs> And I haven't gotten very far. Um, my arms tend to cave out more than my body does, so I have a lot to work on as well. It looks it so difficult. Yeah. Um, oh, have you ever done the trampoline? Um, the toss? The blanket toss? Blanket toss, yeah. I have, yeah. I was taught by my really good friend. He's an elder named Abel Timiak. He lives in the Nubik. And he is known as the master of the blanket toss. And he taught me how to do the blanket toss. So cool. Hopefully one day I'll do that. Oh, it's, it's, it's a very exhilarating toss for sure. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know if people have any more questions. Thoughts? Did anybody try any of the games? Want to demonstrate? No. Brian, did you try any of them? Oh, yeah. I, I was trying all the ones I know before this. Um, <laughs> just to know not to do it on, on camera. <laughs> Sheep is going to try some later. Cool. Um, I think. Hopefully Makwa had a pretty good time learning some of these Northern games. We're definitely going to try and include them in more of our programming. Um, now that we're doing more sports stuff. Awesome. Mm -hmm. well, I have a question. Yes. What's the, oh, what's sorry. the one the interlocking the legs and you like flip somebody over or something like that? That is the leg wrestle, actually. Yes, that's where you would lay on, lay on your back. <clears throat> and you would kind of swing your leg up and you would wrestle him down. I can do a quick demonstration right now, actually. Okay. Let's do it. Like, all right. So you lay here. Okay. And no, other way. Yeah. There you go. Okay. So we go shoulder to shoulder, basically. Okay. And we interlock arms. Right. And we're going to swing up. <laughs> and then one, two, I don't know what we're doing. <laughs> okay. So three. And after three, we're going to go up and lock our leg and then pull, push down. Okay. okay. Good. So one, two, three. <laughs> you can easily be turned like a flapjack for sure doing that game. It's, uh, it's a lot of fun. That is the leg wrestle. That was pretty good. You put up a good fight. Um, one of our workshop leaders a few weeks ago showed with his mom, and he literally just flipped her over in half a second, and I felt so bad. <laughs> <laughs> it happened to me once. That's why I was asking about it. I just wanted to see. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah. Oh, that's a fun one. You flip once in a while. <laughs> I had my fair share of good flips and got some battle scars for sure. <laughs> Yeah, which is which game do you get like the most beat up by? Um, I would say the Nokaha. Yeah. Yeah. Can't imagine. Ouch. <laughs> I mean, things you do, you can do the kneel jump. That's strenuous on your knees as well because it really scrapes your knees. Oh, uh, that one. Yeah. So the kneel the kneel jump is. I'll just do it on the right here. So you go sit down with your knees touching. I'll do this one. I don't want to hit you. So you're touching, your back legs are parallel to the ground. Um, the Alaskans have a way where you can come up, tap your knees, and then jump. But the <clears throat> but the Western way is where you just stay flat. It's a lot harder to do because you need more body control. You, keep, you cannot knock your knees. You can hear that. So what you want to do is just boom, keep flat, then jump, land to your feet. That's the kneel jump. It, it really tears at your shins and your knees. That's, that's one of the ones where you get a lot of bleeding knees from. And that's also a, a painful one. I like teaching that one to kids, but you know, when they're wearing pants or like prop, like padding and stuff, like it's a fun exercise to try, but I can't imagine like scraping your knees up. It, it's, it sucks, it does, but I find it more satisfactory when you, when you get hurt. Cause you know you're doing it and you know, I don't stop to the point where I'm like, oh, I gotta cut, I gotta stop. <laughs> you just keep going. Yeah. Inuit are pretty hardcore. <laughs> <laughs> um, Brian was asking if you have done the airplane before and how how that goes. I, I have. Um, I was really good at it when I was about 180 pounds. But now uh, it's pretty tough to get the chest and the back up. Um, I could definitely try to give it a shot here, but. That chair? Yeah, I'll, I'll try it right now. Or maybe the So, like, don't don't feel like you have to. <laughs> That's really hard. So. Oh my gosh. Yeah. What we're gonna do? Oh. <laughs> Me again. Oh. Oh, sorry. Oh my gosh. I don't know if they can see that. I'll have to help you go over here. Put it further, yeah. Yeah. I'll come over here. Okay. So just to practice. Oh my gosh. Okay. Oh, I thought you needed us for that. No. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's why I set it up there. <laughs> oh. Uh, can you see from there? Yeah. Okay, I guess you guys like you have, can you move your hand? Yeah. Oh, so you can. Oh. I can just do this. Okay. Oh, Is it easier if we, we pull you up? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, rearrange. Okay. Sorry, guys. Go further back there and put that chair that doesn't move. This would be a lot easier if it moves. Okay. Okay. Do uh, so you have to go to the wrist? Yeah. Uh, with both hands. Okay. Well, I'll let you know. I'll let you know when I'm ready. Okay. One, two, three, up. Oh. <laughs> okay. So just like that, it's it's very tough. Um, especially, it's it's very strenuous. You need your body to work as one and it's just it's super nice to just overcome all that and that's the airplane brian i would love to try you try it as well <laughs> if you have three chairs it's perfect he says no <laughs>
Oh man, so much core strength. Very cool. Um, yeah, I mean, I feel like you must be so, so tired. Like, you did so much in this past hour. It's insane. And, like, Arctic Games, they obviously, like, they work every part of your body. So thank yes. you so much for showing us all that. I hope you get to have a nice rest, <laughs> do a bit of stretching after or something. Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, I believe that concludes my demonstrations and the knowledge of the games. I really hope you guys enjoy. I hope you guys give it a try in the future. Um, I can't thank you guys enough for coming and listening, taking time out of your days, your busy days. Um, I want to give a special thank you to Colby for helping me out. Um, a very special thank you to my girlfriend for videoing and holding the camera. Not a uh, nice word. <laughs> uh, just, I want to thank everybody for just coming out and, you know, having share everything so that's awesome thanks guys thank you so much I just, that was so awesome francis usually reminds me to take a photo do you mind if we take a group photo <laughs> yeah so i'm gonna stop the recording now and i'm going to